Uh, today, we're going to be talking about briefly the connection between uh, Vedanta, Christ, and meditation. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so now. Uh, I am the founder of Aware Meditation, and I'm here to share a little bit of light regarding this concept. When people like to talk about Christianity, they often think that it has got nothing to do with either Vedic philosophy or Vedanta. And if anyone is unsure of Vedanta, Vedanta is a Sanskrit word originating two parts. Uh, Vedant is the translation of people say truth or knowledge. And whether you have anta at the end with Sanskrit, it's the end. So it is the ultimate truth, really, or the end of knowledge, as it were. All religions, uh, we can tie a thread of commonality between most religions, all track back to the oldest, which is where Vedanta is. Vedanta has the teachings from the Upanishads, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, and um, other texts. And the majority of these are put in like parables or stories, not too different from the Bible, for people to learn the spiritual lesson. If I'm correct, the Bible has actually 66 books that are put together in an order that an emperor decided to be. And as time has gone on, they've actually found other books that were hidden. Uh, the emperor was uh, converted to Christianity and was very particular about what went into that book. But within there, there is absolutely the same thread that tracks with Vedanta and knowledge. So Vedanta teachings are what we call non-duality. And that means there is only one thing, one ultimate consciousness, and we are all part of that. And within it, there are factions, right? And then it will split and split and split and split. So it almost feel like the factions are not the same with one another. This is being recorded where there's an election in the United States at 2024. We are all humans, whether we vote for a different party or not. Although if you heard people from opposing parties have a conversation, you'd think that they weren't. <laughs> this is a little example of how we split, we split, we split, even though we are of the same. Okay. The non-duality is that we are this experience of flesh, right? And blood and materialism, but we are also something deeper. We have a practice where we go in and we get to feel that deep sense of bliss right? When we meditate, our mind may release some stress, but within it, we connect to this something within us. And when we connect to that, and we find that the mind chatter has diminished, the conversations of what we need to do today or what we haven't done, how many zeros we don't have in the bank account, where the career has or has not gone, we notice that in the meditation, none of that matters anymore because we're now experiencing this bliss consciousness. Now, how does that relate to the philosophies of Christ? Well, if we look at what the message was that Christ was teaching, you are enough with what you are. Come with the clothes that you have on your back and follow me, right? I am the light. You don't need all of those material possessions. You don't need all that flesh and what that means is the mind of the flesh, the flesh meaning you have to look a certain way, you need to come from this group of people, you need to have attained this point in your life if you're not of that bloodline, right? All of that was him saying, transcend that and understand that there is this divine consciousness within. One of the uh, most uh, famous quotes are, was, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. But we forget that there's more to it than that. The quote goes on, and I'm, I'm reading it, to be honest. Uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will sh be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This idea of this divine connection within, which is actually a reflection of who we are, is what this translation of God is meaning in this. We will see God. God cannot be experienced purely by an intellect. When we are using here in this example, heart, right? Right. It says the blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart is free of that agenda of 
coveting someone else's wife or husband, of stealing, of jealousy, right? Um, of all of those so-called deadly sins. That's what they're talking. They're talking about the stress of being in this world to achieve something in order to experience this seeing of God, which has got to do with the heart or the access to the divine soul, that feeling of pure bliss, right? There is this beautiful, as I talked earlier, this divide, 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 this almost this veil between that world and this world. And those of us who meditate get an experience of going through that wall, able to experience both worlds. One hand in the ocean and one hand on the sand, right? And when we experience that bliss, there's a state and it's called a ritam, that state where we get to experience both that abounded, as some of the people I'm looking at have just meditated, have that bliss conscious, and while we're actually eyes open in the world that we deal with. No thing is going to change my world, right? That's a quote from John Lennon, meaning no outside influence is going to change this inner bliss state of consciousness. We can look at all religious individuals, various monks from various traditions, various religions. Ultimately, aren't they all having this inner calm that we're all seeking, right? So the message of, you know, I am the flesh is one, and yet I'm teaching you that we are more than flesh. These are the teachings that came with the individual Christ. It does not oppose Vedante. It's in alignment with it. It is non-duality, right? What he's saying to give up are give up your seeking of the material items to fulfill you from within to feel this bliss. That's why he's saying, throw down the false icons, right? Tear them down. That's why one person who gives all they have to the church is more than someone who has millions because then they'll have to make millions more because the heart has to be open when that, that story of the little child that goes and gives the money, their heart is opened when they do it. Is the heart opened when people do it? That's the access point to be able to find this divine feeling of bliss. When we meditate, yes, we might have lots of thoughts that go and rattle around in our brain, but we also experience this deep, deep sense within. Whereas we are not all of those material items, we are that within and we feel that sense and there's a bliss sense. I mean, I'm looking at someone right now who's completely blissed out and lying down after meditation, right? That bliss is accessible. That's the bliss that the teacher Christ was talking about, right? Yes, Christ went and meditated, meditated, whatever form that you're talking about. If there is true non-duality, all beliefs, all religions come to the same point, finding out that we're actually all the same. We're all individuals trying to connect to this inner source of bliss. And we're sorting out the material world, I'm not going to get into various religions and their beliefs and where their boundaries were set for all various man-made uh, decisions, right? We're talking about how it is in alignment with Vedanta, right? The non-duality teaching of it. Now, whether there were 40 days with the disciples and then he is risen, he is risen can be in many, <laughs> depends on how like people like to take it. But we're looking at a book, whether it's the Bible or the stories of the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, where they're using examples and flowery, maybe almost ridiculous, mystical excursions or examples, but they're talking about the spiritual lesson behind it. The idea that there was this Christ consciousness beyond Christ's body. He was, he has risen, is after demonstrating, here I am, I am more than a body and flesh. And I am here with you after my body has died, right? When we close our eyes and we meditate, we experience this sense of there's something deep within us which is encapsulated within our body. And the challenge of the human path, in my particular belief, is how do we integrate that into the body that we have, right? So from a Vedanta point of view, there is no conflict with the actual spirituality and the teachings that come behind Christ. There are, in fact, many, many groups that have uh, Vedic monks, 
that are schooled in Christ's teachings, right? And you can find those online. I can put some of those resources down there for you to understand there isn't a conflict from the Vedanta point of view. The other way around may differently because there are certain rules that were put in by man in order to uphold a religious group there. So when he has risen is a demonstration of a resurrection of the soul, right? A chance to be reborn, right? People who give themselves to Christ are considered them born again Christians. I'm born again. That was my old life. This is me now. This in the Vedanta viewpoint, you can do at any moment in your life. You can say, I'm reborn. I am no longer um, a caffeine person. I'm joking with that, by the way, right? That is what the principle is talking about. I am more than this flesh. The difference is from our worldview is we do not, um, I want to say admonish, um, we do not cast aside that the flesh is bad. We are here to experience what Christ was talking about, heaven on earth. And in order to have heaven on this earth, we do require a body, right? Um, because if we don't have a body, we're probably in that heaven realm uh, without being on earth. <laughs> and Vedic, the Vedanta viewpoint is we can experience this while we are in this body. And the way we get to it is not by achieving numbers in the bank account, popularity likes on social media, uh, the career acclaim, although it does feel wonderful and lovely because we do have bodies and we like to feel that, it is when we go inward through the accessibility through the heart. And when we meditate and we take our mantra that brings us down inward, we're able to get deeply and very quickly into the state of bliss consciousness. And that is the message that is being upheld through the teacher of Christ. How do we get into that bliss conscious when we're in that we do not need to steal. We do not need to be better than another person. We are willing to help people. We are here to be of service and we are here to make uh, the betterment of the planet and the good for all. However, just as Christ Jesus, Jesus taught, we have free will to choose. So if people don't choose, that's their choice. And do we deal with people who don't choose? Absolutely. And so the condition continues with the viewpoint of everyone has a choice on their part to whether they wish to connect to this deep divine bliss, this sense of deep calm, the idea of not being everything outside of us, but at the same time we are, it simply isn't the source of who we are, right? One consciousness again breaks off, it splits, it splits, it splits, it splits, it splits. So I might not appreciate the politician on the television but underneath, we are all actually the same consciousness upgrading it, except they believe there's a way to access it slightly differently than we do. Any questions that you have that come up, you can put them in the chat or you can just ask me directly now. I have a question, but I don't know if it's on topic. Um, <laughs> it, like you use the word God a lot, and the word God gets there's God conscious. So I wonder when you were talking about the Venda, Vendata, 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 still sleeping. Um, <laughs> but um, is there a word? Knowing that that's just a word, someone made up that word, is there a word that would be the equivalent or something similar in the Vedanta? Yes, they call it Brahman. Brahman. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, not to be confused with the uh, Hindu caste, okay, because uh, they have a Brahman caste. Um, and that's where people can get mixed up with Vedanta in Hinduism. So Vedanta, the ancient scriptures, down from that then, if actually the Brits are the ones that messed it up, uh, these are people who followed a belief in the Indus Valley and then a Cockney Brit um, puts a H in front of it and call it the Hindus Valley. So those people who were in the Hindus Valley were Hindus, right? So within that, they have created a caste system. And so I am say that to differentiate, you're not working on a caste system. Yes, the Vedanta is the Brahman, the absolute. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other questions? 
All right, well, if there are more questions, you can just uh, pop them down in the chat and let you know. And uh, thank you for joining for this particular talk. We'll do a couple of more as it goes. In the meantime, you're always welcome to reach out. Uh, we'll let you know to know when the next group meditation will be next month in April and the topic. We do have coming up the uh, equinox, which is next week. Equinox is where things are all being equal. Uh, we've already adapted to the time change here. <laughs> Feeling the beginning of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. I feel like there's a question that's coming up in the chat. Is that right? I can feel the question is coming up. I'm going to wait for it to be done before I stop that. And uh, If you wish to know when the group meditations are happening, feel free to subscribe to the newsletter and that link is below. And I'm stalling for the end of this message. Okay. Um, so there's a question that's like, what do you do to integrate Vedanta and Christ consciousness? Uh, well, it's the same. The consciousness of Christ of a teacher is an individual from which this knowledge came from, right? So we can have lots of teachers, but we relate to one teacher better. You may find now, if you study the Bible, and you can find there's very few of actually what Christ said directly, uh, that you relate that is part of Vedanta. What you do with meditation is you're going in and you're connecting to it yourself. So when Christ was round, it was very barbaric, right? And we are now in a time where people are actually looking more to upgrade their consciousness in a way that's not based on I mean, I, I don't know, You people were eaten by lions for crying out loud, right? Uh, although we do some really horrific things that are happening in the world. Um, how you integrate it, it is the same teaching that we are more than our bodies, right? So I suggest if you study certain books of Christ following, then will, you read it with this consciousness and knowledge, knowing that it's coming from this non-duality. And you will find that it comes off of the page and it integrates more holistically through you that will then be experienced in a more authentic and honest way. Great. That's All great. right, well, thank you with that. Um, and hopefully I will see you in the next group meditation or in the next course of uh, either meditations. We have the outreach at the end of the month if there are people needing it to. And we also have a little plea out for people who might want to volunteer. Uh, we do want to expand the outreach program. And if not, maybe some of you will join us on the next online Rise Up comedy class. All right. Thank you. Thank you.